A father stands at the edge of a ship, cradling his newborn baby over the open ocean. But when his wife catches him in the act, a shocking confrontation unfolds. What led to this heart-stopping moment? And how does it end in a way no one could expect? Watch to the end to find out. The night air was sharp and unforgiving. Waves crashed violently against jagged rocks below, their relentless rhythm echoing like a heartbeat. Daniel stood at the edge of the cliff, his face pale under the moon's cold light. In his trembling arms, he held the small, warm weight of his newborn daughter. Her dark skin stood in stark contrast to his pale hands, a visible testament to the union that had brought her into existence, and the turmoil tearing him apart. Daniel's breath came in ragged gasps. His mind was a cacophony of doubt, fear, and voices from a lifetime ago. His father's harsh words rang in his ears. Bloodlines matter, son. Protect the family name. Protect your future. He stared down at the frothy chaos of the sea, as though the answers might be found in its depths. But they weren't. Nothing about this felt right. His legs felt like stone, rooted in place by the weight of his warring emotions. He glanced down at the baby in his arms, her tiny face peaceful in sleep. She looked so much like her mother Amara, his heart twisted. The love he had once felt for Amara, fiery and overwhelming, was now shadowed by fear. The world wouldn't accept them, wouldn't accept her. His hands tightened slightly on the baby, a mix of anguish and indecision gripping him. Then a sound pierced the silence. Daniel! The voice was sharp and full of terror. He froze, his head snapping up to see Amara standing a few yards away. She was barefoot, her dark curls wild in the wind, her nightgown billowing around her. Her chest heaved as she stared at the scene before her, eyes wide with disbelief and horror. Daniel! she said again, her voice breaking. What are you doing? Her words felt like a lightning strike, cutting through the fog in his mind. He staggered backward instinctively, holding the baby tighter to his chest. Amara, I... His voice faltered. What could he say? That he'd let his fears and the ghosts of his upbringing lead him to the brink of something unthinkable. Give her to me, Amara cried, taking a step closer. Daniel, give me my baby. Her scream carried the raw, primal desperation of a mother protecting her child. It shattered the fragile illusion that had been building in Daniel's mind, the one where he convinced himself this was somehow an act of mercy. Instead, he saw the truth reflected in her tear-filled eyes. Daniel faltered, his knees nearly buckling. Amara, I didn't mean to... Didn't mean to what? She shouted, her voice trembling with rage and sorrow. You took her from her crib in the middle of the night and brought her here. What were you thinking, Daniel? He couldn't answer. Words stuck in his throat, thick with guilt. Amara stepped closer, her arms outstretched. Give her to me, she demanded again, her tone softening but no less urgent. Please, Daniel, she's our daughter. Daniel hesitated, his mind reeling. He could see the pain etched on Amara's face, the betrayal simmering just beneath the surface. This wasn't who he wanted to be, it wasn't who he thought he was. Yet here he stood, a man unrecognizable to himself, standing on the edge of something irreparable. I... He swallowed hard, forcing the words out. I was scared, Amara, scared of what this means for us, for her. Amara's lips quivered, and her eyes filled with fresh tears. Scared. Daniel, she's just a baby. She's our baby. She didn't ask for this world, but she's here, and she needs us, both of us. Her words hit him like a wave, threatening to sweep him under. He looked down at the tiny face in his arms, then back at Amara. Her outstretched hands trembled, her fingers beckoning him. Finally, his resolve broke. With a shuddering breath, Daniel stepped away from the cliff's edge and toward his wife. Gently, he placed the baby into Amara's waiting arms. She clutched the child to her chest, shielding her as though to protect her from everything, including her own father. Amara's tears fell freely as she cradled the baby, her body shaking. What were you thinking? She asked again, her voice softer now, laced with heartbreak. I don't know, Daniel whispered. His head hung low, the weight of his shame pressing down on him. I thought, I thought I couldn't do this, that I wasn't enough, that she'd be better off without me. Amara's gaze hardened. You're her father, Daniel. She doesn't need perfection. She needs love. 
If you can't give her that, then maybe she is better off without you. Her words were a dagger, but he knew they were deserved. He nodded slowly, unable to meet her eyes. I'm sorry, he said, the words barely audible over the crashing waves. Amara didn't respond immediately. She rocked the baby gently, her own breath beginning to steady. Finally, she looked at him, her expression a mixture of anger and sorrow. Sorry isn't enough, Daniel. Not for this. He nodded again, his throat too tight to speak. The wind howled around them as the three stood together, the cliff no longer a place of endings, but the beginning of something uncertain. For Daniel, it was the start of a long road, one he wasn't sure he deserved to walk. But as he watched Amara turn and carry their baby back toward the safety of home, he felt the faintest flicker of hope that it wasn't too late to change. Not for her, not for them. The soft glow of dawn filtered through the curtains, casting long shadows across the living room. Amara sat on the couch, her arms protectively cradling their baby, while Daniel stood across the room, shoulders hunched and eyes fixed on the floor. The air between them was heavy, charged with unspoken words. You owe me an explanation, Amara said, her voice low and steady but with an edge sharp enough to cut. Daniel hesitated, running a hand through his disheveled hair. I don't even know where to start. Try the truth, Amara snapped, her tone rising. Why, Daniel? Why would you even think about doing something like that to your own child? Her words pierced him. He glanced at the baby, who stirred lightly in her sleep, and his stomach churned with shame. He wanted to say something, anything to make her understand. But how could he explain the storm raging inside him when he barely understood it himself? I... I was scared, he began his voice barely audible. Scared? Amara echoed, her incredulity palpable. Of what, Daniel? Of her? Of me? No, he blurted out, his eyes snapping up to meet hers. Not of you, never of you. He took a step closer but stopped when she stiffened. He sighed, his hands dropping helplessly to his sides. It's me. I was scared of me. Amara's brow furrowed, her confusion giving way to a flicker of anger. That doesn't make any sense. It will, he said, swallowing hard, but I need to explain everything. Daniel had met Amara on a crisp autumn day at a local coffee shop. She was laughing with a group of friends, her voice carrying over the hum of conversation and the hiss of the espresso machine. There was something magnetic about her, an energy that seemed to light up the entire room. When their eyes met, she smiled, and he felt his heart skip a beat. It was as if the universe had shifted slightly, drawing him into her orbit. They struck up a conversation, and before he knew it, they were exchanging numbers. Their first date was magical, filled with laughter and easy conversation. Amara was unlike anyone Daniel had ever known. She was passionate and unapologetically herself, with a sharp wit and a warmth that made him feel like he'd finally found where he belonged. But beneath the surface of his happiness, Daniel knew there was a shadow a voice in the back of his mind whispering doubts. His parents had always made their beliefs about race clear. His father, a stern man with a firm grip on tradition, often spoke about preserving the family's legacy. His mother, though less overt, supported those views through her silence. At first, Daniel brushed off the voice, convinced that his love for Amara was enough to overcome it. He proposed after a year of dating, and when Amara said yes, he felt like the luckiest man alive. Their wedding was small but beautiful, a blend of cultures and traditions that symbolized their union. Amara's family danced with joy, their laughter filling the air. But Daniel's side of the room was quieter, more reserved. His parents wore forced smiles, their disapproval simmering just below the surface. After the ceremony, his father pulled him aside. This is your life now, he said, his tone cold. Just remember that choices have consequences. Daniel shrugged off the comment, determined to focus on his future with Amara. But the seed of doubt had been planted, and over time, it began to grow. When Amara told him she was pregnant, Daniel felt a mix of emotions, joy, fear, and an undercurrent of unease. He buried the fear, telling himself it was normal, that every new father felt this way. But when their daughter was born, the feelings he had suppressed came rushing to the surface. The first time he held her, he was overwhelmed by her smallness, her vulnerability. 
She was perfect in every way, but her dark skin and curly hair made his heart ache with an unnamed fear. She was a beautiful reflection of Amara, and a reminder of the differences that set their family apart from the world he had grown up in. Daniel had convinced himself he could protect her, shield her from the judgment and cruelty of others, but deep down, he knew he was part of the problem. His own biases, the ones he thought he had left behind, were still there, whispering in the back of his mind. Back in the present, Daniel looked at Amara, his chest tightening as he saw the pain in her eyes. When I saw her, I realized she was everything I'm not, strong, pure, innocent, and I didn't know if I deserved her, if I deserved either of you. Amara's lips trembled, but her voice was steady. So you thought taking her to that cliff would, what, solve your problems, make it easier for you to walk away? Daniel shook his head furiously. No, I wasn't going to, he stopped his words catching in his throat. He wasn't even sure what he had been planning. I don't know, I just... I panicked. Amara's gaze hardened. You didn't panic, Daniel. You made a choice, and that choice tells me everything I need to know about how you see her, about how you see me. No, he said desperately, taking another step closer. That's not it. I love you, Amara. I love her. But I... He faltered, the weight of his emotions too much to bear. I don't know how to be the man you need me to be the father she deserves. Amara stared at him for a long moment, her eyes searching his face. Finally she spoke, her voice low and full of sorrow. You're right about one thing, Daniel. You're not the man we need. Not right now. Her words hit him like a punch to the gut. He opened his mouth to respond, but she held up a hand to stop him. You have a lot to figure out, she said, her tone firm, and I'm not going to stand here and let you tear us apart while you do it. Amara turned away, carrying their baby toward the bedroom. As the door clicked shut behind her, Daniel sank into a chair, his head in his hands. The storm inside him raged on, but one thing was clear. If he didn't confront the roots of his fears, he would lose everything he held dear. And this time, there would be no one to blame but himself. The slam of the front door echoed through the empty house like a gunshot. Daniel stood frozen in the silence the absence of Amara and their baby hitting him with the force of a tidal wave. He didn't try to stop her. How could he? He had betrayed her trust and deep down, he wasn't sure he deserved another chance. Amara drove through the quiet streets, her hands gripping the wheel so tightly her knuckles turned white. Her baby whimpered softly in the back seat, the sound tugging at her heart. It's okay, sweetheart, she whispered, her voice trembling. We're going to Aunt Miriam's. She'll know what to do. Miriam lived in a small, vibrant house on the other side of town. A well-known advocate for racial justice, she had dedicated her life to fighting the kinds of prejudice Amara now realized had infected her own marriage. When Miriam opened the door and saw Amara standing there, her baby in her arms, her expression darkened. What happened? she demanded, ushering them inside. Amara's tears spilled over as she explained everything. The late-night confrontation. Daniel's shocking actions, and the depths of his internal struggle. Miriam's face hardened with each word. He doesn't deserve you, Miriam said firmly, pacing the room like a caged tiger. And he sure as hell doesn't deserve her. She gestured to the baby, who had finally drifted to sleep in Amara's arms. Miriam, it's not that simple, Amara said softly. Isn't it? Miriam shot back. He took your child to the edge of a cliff, Amara. That's not love. That's... I don't even know what that is, but it's not something you can fix. Amara flinched at the harshness of Miriam's words, but she couldn't deny the truth in them. She loved Daniel, but love alone didn't feel like enough anymore. Back at the house, Daniel sat alone in the living room, the silence pressing in on him like a physical weight. He glanced at the empty crib in the corner, the sight twisting his gut. He had thought he would feel relief when they left. Relief that he wouldn't have to face the suffocating weight of his fears, but all he felt was an aching emptiness. As he stared into the shadows, memories began to surface unbidden and relentless. He was twelve years old, sitting at the dining room table while his father lectured him. The older man's voice was stern, his gaze cold and unyielding. You need to understand something, Daniel, his father said, tapping the table for emphasis. People like us have a responsibility. Our bloodline, our legacy, it matters. You don't throw that away. Young Daniel nodded, eager to please. 
He didn't fully understand what his father meant, but the gravity in his tone made it seem important. Over the years, those lessons became more explicit. His father spoke of pride, purity, and superiority, weaving a narrative that Daniel accepted without question. It wasn't until he met Amara that he began to see the cracks in his father's teachings. But now, sitting alone in the house they had made together, Daniel realized those cracks had never truly shattered. His father's voice was still there, a toxic echo in his mind. Daniel ran a hand over his face, the weight of his memories suffocating him. He thought of Amara, her fierce love and unwavering strength. He thought of their baby, so small and innocent, deserving of a father who could protect and cherish her. And he thought of himself, the man who had almost destroyed it all because he was too afraid to confront the lies he had been taught. The truth hit him like a thunderclap. His fear wasn't about Amara or their baby, it was about him, his inadequacies, his failure to unlearn the hate that had been ingrained in him since childhood. For the first time, Daniel allowed himself to feel the full weight of his guilt, not as a punishment, but as a starting point. He couldn't change the past, but he could choose what kind of man he wanted to be moving forward. The road ahead would be long and difficult, but for the first time, Daniel felt a flicker of determination. He didn't want to be the man his father had raised. He wanted to be better, for himself, for Amara, and for the child who had already begun to teach him the meaning of unconditional love. As the sun began to rise outside the window, Daniel made a silent vow. He would do whatever it took to make amends, and he would start by confronting the man who had shaped him into someone he no longer wanted to be. He stood, the weight of his decision grounding him, but also giving him purpose. Change wouldn't come overnight, but it had to start somewhere. And it would start now. The street outside Miriam's house was quiet, but Daniel's heart pounded like a drum. He stood on the doorstep, staring at the bright red door as though it might swallow him whole. The house, small but vibrant, radiated warmth and life, the very things he had nearly extinguished from his own. Clutching the bouquet of wildflowers he had picked up on the way, he took a deep breath and knocked. The sound echoed loudly in the still morning air. Moments later the door swung open, revealing Miriam. Her sharp eyes scanned him from head to toe, and her lips curled into a scowl. What do you want? she demanded, her tone as unyielding as steel. I need to see Amara, Daniel said, his voice hoarse. Miriam stepped out onto the porch, closing the door behind her with a snap. She crossed her arms, her stance radiating defiance. After what you did... You think you can just waltz in here with flowers and fix everything? Daniel swallowed hard, the weight of her judgment settling heavily on his shoulders. No, he said quietly, I don't think I can fix it, but I need to try. Please, Miriam, just let me talk to her. Miriam's eyes narrowed. You're not getting anywhere near her or that baby unless I say so. So why don't you tell me what you think you're going to say? Inside the house, Amara sat on the couch her baby nestled in her arms. She couldn't hear every word, but the low rumble of Daniel's voice filtered through the door. Her heart ached as conflicting emotions warred within her, love, anger, betrayal, and the faintest glimmer of hope. Outside, Daniel pressed on, his voice thick with emotion. I was wrong, Miriam. I was so, so wrong. I've spent my whole life listening to lies, about race, about family, about what matters, and I let those lies poison me. I hurt Amara, I hurt my own daughter, and I hate myself for it. Miriam's glare softened slightly, though her arms remained crossed. Words are cheap, Daniel. You think just saying you're sorry is going to undo what you did? No, he said, shaking his head. I don't, but I'm not here to make excuses. I'm here to take responsibility. For the first time in my life, I'm ready to face the truth, no matter how ugly it is. Miriam studied him for a long moment her sharp gaze probing for any hint of insincerity. Finally, she let out a frustrated sigh. Stay here. She turned and disappeared into the house. Amara looked up as Miriam entered the living room. Her sister's expression was a mix of exasperation and reluctant acknowledgement. He's out there, Miriam said, and for what it's worth, I think he means it, but it's your call. Amara hesitated, her heart pounding. Part of her wanted to shut him out, to protect herself and her child from further pain. 
but another part of her, the part that still loved him despite everything, needed to hear what he had to say. Carefully, she handed the baby to Miriam and walked to the door. When she stepped outside, Daniel's breath caught. She looked tired but radiant, her strength shining through even in her pain. For a moment he couldn't find the words, overwhelmed by the sight of her. Amara, he began, his voice trembling. I don't even know where to start. I... You can start by being honest, she interrupted, her tone firm but not unkind. Why are you here, Daniel? I'm here because I love you, he said. Because I love our daughter and because I know I've failed you. I let my fear, my prejudice and my own insecurities control me. I grew up in a world that taught me to see differences as threats, and I was too weak to see past that. But I don't want to be that man anymore. I want to change, for you, for her, and for myself. Amara crossed her arms, her expression guarded. Change isn't something you can promise in a speech, Daniel. It's something you do, actions, not words. I know, he said quickly. That's why I'm not asking you to forgive me, not yet. I'm asking for a chance to prove that I can be the husband and father you deserve. Amara studied him, her emotions churning. She wanted to believe him, to trust that he could change. But trust wasn't something she could give freely, not after what he had done. If I agree to this, she said slowly, it will be on my terms. You'll have to face everything, your fears, your biases, your past. No shortcuts, no hiding. And if you ever hurt our daughter again, you won't get another chance. Daniel nodded, tears welling in his eyes. I'll do whatever it takes, I swear. Miriam stepped out, holding the baby. I still don't trust you, she said bluntly, handing the child to Amara. But for her sake, I hope you mean what you say. Daniel looked at the baby, his heart breaking and mending all at once. He didn't reach for her. He knew he hadn't earned that right yet. But as he looked into her tiny face, he felt a surge of determination. This was his moment to start over, to rebuild what he had nearly destroyed. And he wouldn't waste it. The journey began with an unsteady step. Daniel stood in the waiting room of the therapist's office, his palms sweating as he stared at the door marked Dr. Elena Perez, licensed counsellor. The thought of unpacking years of pain, bias and fear made his chest tighten, but Amara's voice echoed in his mind. No shortcuts, no hiding. He walked through the door, ready to face himself. In therapy, Daniel began to peel back the layers of his upbringing, uncovering the roots of his prejudice. Dr. Perez guided him gently but firmly, asking questions that cut straight to the heart of his beliefs. What did your father teach you about people who looked different from you? She asked during their second session. Daniel hesitated, his throat tightening. He... He made it seem like they were beneath us, like we had to keep ourselves separate to stay pure. The word tasted bitter on his tongue, and how did that make you feel? Daniel looked down, his hands gripping the edges of the couch. I didn't question it at the time. I just wanted to make him proud. But now, it makes me sick. Session by session, Daniel began to understand how his father's influence had shaped his fears and insecurities. He realized that his prejudice wasn't rooted in hate, but in a deep-seated fear of losing his identity, an identity he now saw as a house of cards built on lies. Outside of therapy, Daniel threw himself into the work of rebuilding trust with Amara. At her suggestion, he joined her and Miriam at community events, celebrating diversity and racial unity. At first, Daniel felt out of place. The stares from others, some curious, some wary, made him acutely aware of his past mistakes. But he pushed through, determined to learn. One Saturday, he attended a workshop on allyship. The facilitator, a black man named James, shared his experiences growing up in a segregated neighborhood. I don't need you to fix anything for me, James said, looking directly at Daniel. I need you to look at the world through my eyes and then decide what kind of person you want to be in it. The words stuck with Daniel. For the first time, he stopped trying to justify or explain himself and started listening. He asked questions, not to defend his perspective, but to understand theirs. Miriam, still skeptical, watched him closely at these events. She saw his unease, but also his effort. Slowly, her icy demeanor thawed, though she wasn't ready to trust him fully yet. Daniel's journey toward change didn't sit well with his own family. 
When his parents learned he was attending therapy and participating in community events, they staged an intervention. One evening his father showed up unannounced, his face a mask of disappointment. What are you doing, Daniel? his father demanded, pacing the living room. Running around with those people acting like you owe them something? You're humiliating us. Daniel felt a familiar pang of guilt, but this time he didn't back down. I'm not doing this for you, Dad. I'm doing it for my wife and my daughter, and for myself, his father sneered. That child isn't even yours. Look at her. She'll never belong to us. The confrontation left him shaken, but it also solidified his resolve. He wasn't going to let his parents' toxic beliefs dictate his life anymore. Back at home, Daniel began spending more time with his daughter. At first he was hesitant, unsure of how to connect with her. But as he watched her tiny fingers grasp his own, and her wide eyes take in the world with wonder, something shifted. One night, as Amara watched from the doorway, Daniel held the baby in his arms and whispered, I was so scared when you were born, not because of who you are, but because I didn't think I could be what you needed. But I promise, I'm going to do everything I can to be a father you can be proud of. Amara's heart softened at the sight. She could see the sincerity in his eyes, the love blooming there. For the first time since that awful night on the cliff, she felt a glimmer of hope. Over time, Daniel and his daughter developed a bond that transcended words. He read to her, sang to her, and marveled at her every milestone. In her laughter he found joy, in her cries he found purpose. One evening Daniel attended a panel discussion on interracial families. A young woman on the panel shared her experiences as the child of a mixed-race couple. My parents faced so much hate she said, her voice steady. But what mattered most to me was that they loved each other and loved me. That's what gave me strength. The words resonated deeply with Daniel. He realized that his daughter would face challenges he couldn't fully understand, but his love and support could make all the difference. That night, as he lay in bed next to Amara, he took her hand. I know I've hurt you, he said, but I want you to know I'm not going anywhere. I'm with you and her every step of the way. Amara squeezed his hand, her eyes glistening with unshed tears. You've come a long way, Daniel, but this is just the beginning. He nodded, knowing she was right. Healing wasn't a destination, it was a journey. But for the first time he felt like he was on the right path. The air buzzed with warmth and energy at the community event, celebrating interracial families. Children played on the grass their laughter rising above the hum of conversation, while adults mingled under colorful banners proclaiming unity in diversity. Amara and Daniel stood near a food stall, their daughter nestled securely in Amara's arms. Daniel felt the weight of the moment pressing on his chest. This event wasn't just another step in his journey, it was the ultimate test of how far he'd come. As Daniel scanned the crowd, a familiar voice called his name. He turned to see Mark, an old friend from his childhood, weaving through the crowd. Mark's face split into a grin as he approached, but it faltered when his eyes landed on Amara and the baby. So it's true, Mark said, his tone laced with disbelief. You really went and... Well, I guess everyone has their thing. Daniel stiffened, his hands clenching into fists. Amara's jaw tightened, but she remained silent, her gaze fixed on Daniel. What are you even doing here, man? Mark continued laughing humorlessly. Parading around like this is normal? He gestured toward Amara and their daughter, his disdain barely concealed. The crowd around them grew quiet as conversations trailed off. All eyes turned toward the confrontation. Daniel took a deep breath, his heart pounding. He felt the weight of his past, the years of silent complicity, the fear of standing up for what was right bearing down on him. But then he looked at Amara, at the strength in her eyes, and at his daughter, her innocence untouched by the ugliness of the world. This is normal, Daniel said, his voice steady. This is my family, and if you can't respect that, then maybe you're the one who doesn't belong here. Mark sneered, shaking his head. You've changed, man. Sold out. I have changed, Daniel said, his voice rising with conviction. I'm proud of it because the person I was before, he would have let you say things like that without a word, but not any more. Mark started to respond, but Daniel cut him off. You don't get to disrespect my wife and my daughter, so if that's all you've got to say, we're done here. 
The crowd murmured in approval, and Mark, clearly outnumbered, slinked away. Daniel stood there, his chest heaving as the tension dissolved. Amara stared at Daniel, her eyes wide with surprise and something else, something softer. He turned to her, his face a mixture of nervousness and hope. Are you okay? he asked. She nodded, a small smile playing on her lips. You didn't have to do that. Yes, I did, he said, his voice trembling with emotion. For you, for her, for us. Amara's eyes glistened as she handed their daughter to him. Daniel cradled the baby against his chest, his hand stroking her tiny back. Amara, I've spent so much time running from myself, from my fears, but I'm done with that. I'm done being the man who hurt you. He looked at her, his voice breaking. I love you and I love her. I know I can't erase what I've done, but I promise I'll spend the rest of my life making it right. Tears slipped down Amara's cheeks, but she didn't look away. Instead, she stepped closer, her hand resting on his arm. You've come so far, Daniel, and I see it. I see the man you're becoming. The moment stretched between them, heavy with unspoken forgiveness and renewed hope. As the sun began to set, casting the park in golden hues, Daniel was asked to say a few words to the crowd. He hesitated, but Amara squeezed his hand. You can do this, she said. Standing on the small stage, Daniel cleared his throat. I used to think love was enough, he began, his voice unsteady. But I've learned that love isn't just a feeling. It's a choice, a commitment to grow, to challenge yourself, and to be better. He glanced at Amara and their daughter, his voice growing stronger. This journey hasn't been easy. I've made mistakes, big ones. But I'm here today because of two incredible people who've shown me what real strength and love look like. I'm proud to be their husband and father. The crowd erupted in applause, and Daniel stepped down, his heart full. Amara met him with a smile that spoke of second chances and new beginnings. Together they walked away from the stage, united as a family stronger, wiser, and ready for whatever lay ahead. The ocean roared beneath a sky streaked with orange and pink hues, the setting sun casting a warm glow over the rocky cliffs. The scene was almost identical to the one that had haunted Daniel's nightmares, yet everything felt different now. This time he wasn't alone. Amara stood by his side, their baby nestled in her arms, bundled against the chill of the sea breeze. Daniel gazed out at the horizon, the rhythmic crash of waves calming the storm within him. As they walked closer to the edge, Daniel's footsteps slowed. He glanced down at the jagged rocks and foaming surf below, memories rushing back of that night, his despair, his shame, and the heavy weight of his own prejudice. But instead of fear, he now felt an overwhelming sense of gratitude. This place, Daniel began, his voice trembling. I thought it would always remind me of what I almost did. But now, Standing here with both of you, I see something else. Amara tilted her head, curiosity and warmth in her gaze. What do you see? I see a beginning, he said, stepping closer and reaching out to take their daughter from her arms. The baby stirred slightly, her tiny hands curling around his finger. I almost let fear and hate destroy everything, Daniel said, his voice thick with emotion. But now, holding her, I realize she's the best part of me. She's my chance to get it right. Amara touched his arm gently, her presence steady and reassuring. Daniel cradled his daughter, staring into her wide, curious eyes. The ocean breeze tugged at her soft curls, and she gurgled, her tiny face breaking into a smile. I promise you, Daniel said, his voice firm yet tender. You'll never feel the weight of my past. You'll grow up surrounded by love, acceptance and strength. I'll make sure of it. He turned to Amara, his eyes glistening with tears. And I promise you too, no more doubts, no more running. I'm here, fully, for both of you. Amara's eyes shimmered with unshed tears, and she leaned into him, their daughter nestled between them. The family lingered at the edge of the cliff, the setting sun casting their shadows long and stretching toward the horizon. As they turned to leave, Daniel felt lighter, as if he'd left the last remnants of his guilt behind swallowed by the endless ocean below. They walked back to the trail, hand in hand. The baby babbled happily, her tiny voice breaking the silence. I never thought we'd get here, Amara said softly, her tone a mixture of awe and relief. Neither did I, 
Daniel admitted, squeezing her hand. But I'm grateful every day that you gave me the chance to change. You earned it, she replied, her smile warm. As they reached the car, Daniel paused, turning back for one last look at the cliff and the sea. I used to think the ocean was endless, he said, his voice introspective. But now I see that it's not about the vastness, it's about the tides, how they change, how they bring renewal. That's what I want to be for her, for us, a tide that brings something better. Amara rested her head on his shoulder. And you are. Daniel smiled, a sense of peace washing over him. He looked at his daughter, her eyes bright with innocence and wonder. In that moment, he knew that his journey wasn't over. It had just begun. The family drove home as the stars began to dot the evening sky. Daniel narrated his thoughts, imagining the life they would build together. She'll grow up knowing she's loved, he said aloud, his voice soft but resolute. She'll know she belongs, and she'll never feel like she has to hide who she is. That's my promise to her, and to you. Amara reached for his hand, her touch grounding him. We'll do it together. As they pulled into their driveway, their home bathed in the glow of porch lights, Daniel felt a sense of hope he hadn't known was possible. The story closed with the image of the three of them stepping inside, the warmth of their love and unity, a beacon against the darkness of the world outside. Together, they were unstoppable, a family reborn, ready to face the future with courage, acceptance, and unwavering love.